Hello YouTube chess lovers and our friends, this is Gunjan here and welcome to the fifth part of my chess repruta against e4. Now in this video I'm going to deal how to defuse the scotch gambit. If you recall my previous video, at this point when white responded with the move d4, here my recommendation was to play the move e5 and if white wants now he can go back to the rim of scotch game via this order, and here white can play the move knight to f3. So in a way it's a transposition to the scotch game and black should know exactly how is going to handle the scotch game. Before we look at the main scotch lines let me deal with the gambit ideas by white and that is I'm going to cover in this video. After e cross d4 white will play the move bishop to c4 and this is known as scotch gambit. Now, Scotch Gambit hasn't often played at the highest level, but at the club level it's a frequent member and the simple reason is it has a tremendous attacking power. So that's why it's very essential for you to know how to handle this stuff. There are many different ways a Scotch Gambit can occur. Let me demonstrate how this can be occurs in different move orders. First of all, after e4, if black responds with the move e5, and after knight f3, knight c6, now comes the d4. And after e cross d4 and bishop to c4, we are back to the scotch gambit. And this is probably the main order. The another way is e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6. White can start with the joko piano line, which is bishop to c4. And after black respond with the move bishop to c5, now white can play this move, which is d4 again we are back in the rims of the scotch gambit. So you can see there are plenty of ways why I can trick black enter into the scotch gambit move order. As a part of my repruta we are going to stick with our main move order which is after e4, nc6, d4, e5, knight to f3, e cross d4 and here white plays the move bishop to c4. At this point I am recommending that black should play the move bishop to c5 so it looks very natural because it's not only developing a piece but it's also protecting this pawn and here white has few options. Now the main line is the move c3 but there are other side lines has been oftenly played which we are going to look at the end of this video. So straight away let me enter to the main line which occurs when white plays the move c3 and now here I recommend that you should play the move knight to f6. But before we enter the knight to f6, let's see what kind of danger black can fall into if black greedily accept this pawn. So let's say d cross c3, white has a fantastic shot which is bishop cross f7 and after king takes f7 and queen to d5 check, not only black lost the castle ride but white will regain the piece. So please don't fall for this kind of greedy trappy lines and that's why I'm recommending the move knight to f6 at this point. Now again I have highlighted by the arrows white has a few choices. The main line is the move e5 but before we look at the main line let's look at the side variations first. The first move which I want to cover is the move bishop to g5 which is not a good move but some of the people are still trying and I don't know what's the compensation white gets after the move at 6. Now here if white takes this knight let's say bishop cross f6 then queen takes f6 black is completing his development but meanwhile black all pieces are protecting the d4 pawn and it's very hard for white to you know regain the pawn so I don't consider this line as good for white instead of bishop captures f6 the other move is bishop to h4 but again I don't believe in this line because black hasn't castle on the king side black can simply play the move g5 and after bishop to g3 black can cold bloodedly capture this pawn so all in all bishop to g5 is not a good move the second move white can try is this tricky looking move which is castle on the king side and here I recommend that you should play the move knight takes e4 and do not afraid of the pin so for example there are two moves tried over here in first game uh, my opponent tried rook to e1 but after very simple d5 it's very hard to believe that white has something for his pawn so the game continues with 
c cross d4 and after bishop to b4 and bishop to d2 black can simply castle on the king side the next move black can either play bishop to e6 bishop to f5 or bishop to g4 depending on the circumstances and please note that at this point black is a clear pawn up the other move tried at this point is c cross d4 well here black has a very tricky reply and that start with the move d5 main line goes like this so d cross c5 and d cross c4 and here white has two choices now in the first game my opponent tried the main line stuff which is the move queen e2 but please remember this move from the black perspective and this is very amazing move which can diffuse the whole white setup and that is the move queen to d3 so immediately attacking the queen and the game goes like this so my opponent tried rook to e1 and i responded with the move f5 and now after knight to c3 i simply castle on the king side and after some captures i played the move bishop to f5 so material is balanced at this point but look at the tremendous activity from the black perspective black has almost activated all his minor pieces and on the very next move white rook can come to either d file or the e file and look at the white undeveloped pieces so although material is balanced black has a tremendous initiative apart from queen to e2 the second move tried is queen captures d8 and after king captures now white plays the move rook to d1 check and the game continues like this so i played the move bishop to d7 and now black is threatening to capture that pawn so my opponent played the move bishop to e3 i played the move king to e7 so now idea is very simple if white wants to play the move knight to a3 attack the pawn on c4 then black can simply reply with the move bishop to e6 protecting that pawn in the game my opponent try the move knight b to d2 but after knight captures knight and rook captures knight i played the move rook h to d8 and after rook a to c1 which has a merit of attacking my pawn i can simply defend my pawn with the move bishop to e6 and now white is very hard pressed for the compensation in the game my opponent desperately try this move which is knight to g5 but i responded very very accurately so i played the move rook captures rook and after bishop captures rook i hit that bishop with my rook development and after bishop to e3 now i played the move bishop to f5 so please note not only black has defended the h7 but white cannot capture this pawn because there is a back rank mate exist my opponent tried to give his king a lift square so he played the move h3 but now the task become very very easy for black so black plays the move f6 which has a merit of attacking the knight and after knight to f3 bishop to e6 black can finally manage to hold on to that pawn and the game so that is about queen captures queen with this lines we can easily conclude that at this point castling on the king side is not at all good for white and black can simply reply with the capturing the e pawn and remain a pawn up in the rest of the game the third move i want to consider over here is c captures d4 and now black has to throw this check which is bishop to b4 check here there are two main moves the first rubbish move is knight to c3 which is a some kind of gambit idea but i don't believe in this gambit ideas because black can simply capture this pawn and asking white to show his compensation well here the line continues with the castle on the king side so inviting black to capture the knight with his own knight where some of the nice tricks exist for the white side but we are not fall into this kind of tricks instead of that we are going to simply capture this knight with the bishop and again if simply recapture the bishop then the move d5 is very strong and black will be a pawn up for the rest of the game that means white has to try out his tricky path and it continues with the move d5 you can see right now black's two pieces are hanging now here there are few variations 
Amongst them, knight to e5 is the strongest of all, but it leads to a very complicated play. So instead of this, I like the old traditional move, and that is the move bishop back to the f6. And this line completely diffused this setup. Now white has to regain his piece back. So there are two ways white can go for it. So the first obvious way is to immediately capture on c6. Afterwards, black will recapture with the b pawn. And after rook to e1, black has a very simple answer, castling on the king side. And at first sight, it looks like black has given up the piece. But after rook captures knight, black can regain the piece via the move d5. Instead of d cross a6, uh, the another tricky line is rook to e1. So again, black has two pieces are hanging, and again. Black is going to play a very safe move, and that is knight to e7, allowing white to capture this knight, and then black will respond with the move d6. If you look at the position carefully, black has a compact pawn structure, and not only that, black is a clear pawn up. So if white doesn't demonstrate anything over here, then white is completely losing this game. Accordingly, white has to play this move, bishop to g5. Idea is to double the black pawn. So black response is pretty much forced. Black has to capture this bishop, and after knight recapture, black can easily castle on the king side, inviting white to play his tricky move, which is queen to h5, which threatening a checkmate. But just one move, that is bishop to f5, and black parry all the threat and remain a pawn up. After rook to e2, bishop to g6, and queen to f3, black can respond with the move knight to f5. Not only at this point black is hitting the knight, but black is also a clear pawn up with no problem at all. So that is about the gambit idea of knight to c3. At this point, the main move is bishop to d2. Bishop to d2 is a very tricky move because he's inviting knight takes e4, which is exactly I'm going to recommend. But the following variation is very very important to understand because not only white will regain the pawn, but white will have some kind of active position. The line runs like this. So after knight takes e4, white is going to capture this bishop, and after knight recaptured, now white is going to give this check bishop cross f7. And after king recapture, white will play the move queen to b3. But still, I believe that this line is very good for black. And if you check out with any computers, uh, it will show you that black has a plus position. So let me show you how black should continue over here. So here, black should play the move d5. And after queen recaptures, now black should play the move rook to e8, trying to get a discovery to the white king. So white has to castle on the king side. Afterwards, black has to play the move c6. So not only consolidating the d5 pawn, but in some lines queen has this excess on this either b6 or the e5 square. Here the line continues with the move knight to e4 check, and after king to g8, knight to c3 has been tried. But against this, the very simple reply from the black perspective is to play queen to b6 and going for the queen trade. Because this queen trade can only help black, so the game continues like this. So after white capture the knight and black recapture, yes, black indeed get this isolated pawn, but that can be very easily defendable. As the game continues, you will see that can be turned out as an asset. So in this game, white tried the move rook to even immediately attacking the e4, but after bishop to e6. So now, if white capture the e4, then black captures on a2. So white defended with the move a3, but after bishop to d5, yes, white has managed to post his knight on a beautiful square, but so did as a black, and this position is roughly balanced. So black will have no problem at all in this line. With this, we have concluded all the side variations. Now we are going back to the main line, that is the move. E five.